Hi, it's clicked on to the Tropical Tidbit for Wednesday evening, August 23rd. As always, the thoughts in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the statements from your local officials, the National Weather Service, and the National Hurricane Center. We're tracking Harvey, which has reformed now over the southern Gulf of Mexico. We talked yesterday about how the system was becoming better defined and close to becoming a tropical cyclone again, and it has done so today with the NHC resuming advisories on tropical depression Harvey, centered now northwest of the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, this remains a bit of an elongated circulation, kind of loose. The recon plane that went in there this morning found light winds all around this area here. Nothing very strong, so this is only a tropical depression. Uh, and if you assume that it's centered somewhere in here, and you look due north, you'll see some of these low-level clouds all day have been out of the southeast. If the system was circular, you'd expect the winds more out of the easterly direction. So you can tell that there's some sort of elongation toward the northwest here and the system has an elliptical shape like this, southeast to northwest. You can confirm that by looking at the ASCAP pass from about 11 a.m. Central Time. You can see Harvey here and the elliptical shape to the wind field, confirming what we see on satellite imagery. So this is still uh, asymmetric and not circular, and uh, this is important because these systems have to be circular and compact in order to intensify quickly. So for the moment, with this convection still kind of disorganized, not a lot of great banding um, or central uh, convection uh, scattered all day, and the fact that it is still elliptical in shape, we're not going to see anything happen rapidly in the short term. However, there are some signs that this is going to become better organized over the next day or so, and we could see it start strengthening by some time tomorrow or tomorrow night. Uh, one reason for this is if we look at the larger view here, you can notice that we just talked about the elliptical shape being southeast to northwest. You might notice this is rotated over from what it was yesterday, which was southwest to northeast. So it, it rotated like this, such that it is now like this. This is going to continue rotating this way, so you can imagine that by later tonight and tomorrow, it could be oriented more east to west. The reason this matters is because uh, all this convection to the north of Harvey is what caused it to be elliptically shaped in the first place. The system came off of the Yucatan and then this convection caused pressure falls to the north such that the circulation was elongated toward the convection and thus formed the initial ellipse. Then it rotated around, now it's like this, and it's going to continue doing that. So then by the time it's this way, this convection isn't going anywhere just yet, so it's going to continue to influence the circulation and attempt to reform troughiness to the north. So if you have an ellipse oriented like this and you have the pressure contours bulge this way, it tries to round out the ellipse such that it becomes more circular and symmetric. So the natural evolution of this is such that by the time it rotates this way tonight and tomorrow, we will start to see it looking more circular in shape, and we will likely see something more symmetric looking by this time tomorrow evening. Once that occurs, the system will be in better shape for intensification, and we will likely see a strengthening Harvey by that time and as we head into Friday. So this is the concern as this moves northwest is while it has time over water, it has about two and a half days left to go. Conditions are likely to be favorable. If we look at water vapor imagery, shear is pretty low. We do have this upper low off of Louisiana. This is beginning to erode and any shear that it was producing out of the southwest will be weakening with time. There is a sagging trough left behind here. It's very weak and mostly in the mid troposphere. But as this backs westward over Mexico, the shear will continue to lighten even even more, and we will likely start to see some of this outflow that you can see expanding toward the north and east start to balloon around the storm in an even more symmetric fashion, and we'll likely see Harvey here with a strong anticyclone aloft with clockwise flow in the upper levels, which would favor intensification. And there's not a lot of large-scale dry air on this side. It's, you know, not super moist, but it's not super dry either. And all signs point to a favorable environment for strengthening of Harvey as soon as its structure becomes better organized, aka as soon as it becomes circular like we just talked about. So we're going to be dealing with Harvey for two and a half days over water, very warm water, and uh, we could easily see a hurricane approaching the Texas coastline as it is forecast to do sometime on Saturday morning. And uh, the National Hurricane Center forecast has a hurricane watch up for the Texas Gulf Coast and uh, tropical or tropical storm watches for northern Mexico and up through the Houston Galveston area. So this is going to be something to to pay close attention to as far as winds go, but the biggest problem with the system by far is anticipated to be flooding. You can of course have storm surge flooding near the coast, but inland flooding will also be a big problem with the system considering it is anticipated to slow down. You can see this forecast track. This is Friday afternoon. Saturday afternoon it's on shore, but then look at Sunday afternoon and Monday afternoon. The storm has barely moved 
during those three days, and that means a lot of rainfall falling over Texas. Uh, this is because of the pattern we talked about yesterday. If we look at the European 500 millibar forecast, this is Saturday morning. The storm is making landfall. What's going on here? We have a ridge to the east over the northern gulf. This is what is helping to steer the storm northward into the Texas coast. But we also have a ridge to the west over the southwestern United States, which is beginning to amplify, causing flow out of the north to the west of the storm. And this uh, high over the gulf is causing flow toward the north on the east of the storm. These two flows oppose each other, and these ridges are fighting, if you will, to steer Harvey. And what happens if neither of them wins, uh, the flow is pretty weak. And this is what happens. The storm stalls out here because these two are relatively equal strength and the storm doesn't really have anything to force it to go any particular direction, so it really slows down over Texas. The other problem with this, along with causing a lot of rainfall, is that we don't know precisely where it's going to go uh, because one of these ridges could eventually become a little bit stronger than the other. If the southwestern ridge does, then the storm would turn left and follow the flow into northern Mexico or western Texas. But if this ridge becomes more dominant, the storm could move northeastward toward the Houston area and Louisiana. This causes uncertainty both in who gets some of the wind along the coastline initially, but also who gets the heaviest rainfall. If we look at the WPC outlook, currently the bullseye is near the Houston-Galveston area for 10 to 15 inches on the current forecast, but if the system moves more to the left like this, which some models do have, uh, then you'll have much more rainfall over southern Texas, northern Mexico, and the Houston-Galveston uh, and Louisiana areas would be spared the heaviest rainfall, but if the system turns more toward the right like this, then we would have much more rain over the Houston and Louisiana area. If you look back at the European model, uh, by 12 Saturday, here it is again, and by Sunday morning you can see that it's barely moved, and on this particular run, by the time we get to Monday, you see that it actually starts coming back out toward the east. So the European model has this actually coming back out over water by the time we get to Monday. And, or uh, Tuesday rather, and this is actually back out over the Gulf. These are some of the wild solutions that we've seen, and there's a lot of different possible tracks here because the steering currents are so chaotic. And it's important not to focus on the exact forecast right now because we just don't know enough about what could happen. Once it gets to the Texas coastline, all bets are off here. It could go virtually any direction at this point, and it's uh, really impossible to tell you what's going to happen after it gets toward the Corpus Christi southern Texas coast area. What is certain at this point is that at least part of Texas is going to get a lot of rainfall. Exactly how far east that rainfall extends again depends upon the track which we just discussed and it's not clear how much rain Houston particularly or Louisiana is actually going to get. Right now again a lot is forecast and folks should be preparing here. It doesn't take a lot of rain in this part of the country to cause big problems. Please heed uh, local emergency management as uh, they will be trying to coordinate things in this region of the country. We have some decent lead time on this and uh, we'll have a couple days to prepare. Please make sure your hurricane plan is set to go and that you're executing that well before Harvey reaches your area. So a lot of uncertainty to go, uh, but we are expecting a strengthening storm, potentially hurricane approaching the Texas coastline sometime on Saturday morning and heavy rainfall, storm surge, uh, all sorts of flooding possible over portions of Texas. And uh, this could be a, a very damaging event in some areas. So do be prepared and uh, stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center for the latest information. I'll have another update tomorrow. That's it for today. Thanks for watching.